Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here and I want to talk to you about a little project that I've been working on and a possible solution that I found. I've been working on a problem around scheduling volunteers, scheduling employees and there's a little bit to this business process that I need to manage and I've been working on this writing some custom code on my live coding stream and I, I think I may have found a solution that can help with a little bit of this problem. I went out and I was looking for a tool for business process management and the folks at OptimaJet suggested I check out their DW kit tool that will allow me to automatically script and manage all of those processes using their workflow management tool. Let me show you a little bit about it. I'm going to take you over to my web browser and we'll take a look at DW Kit's features, launch DW Kit, and show you what a vacation request sample looks like and how easy it is to customize it. Let's go take a look. This is the DW Kit website at dwkit.com. And there's all kinds of information here about their BPM platform. That's their business process management platform. And it's all built with .NET Core. So if you're a .NET developer, you already know how to manage and extend this application. If I scroll down here, you can see it runs extremely fast because it's on .NET Core. It helps folks who are in the business world work with developers so that business folks can define process flows and developers can customize it. And there's a bunch of modules already built for you so you can design workflow, build forms, and even ensure security is baked in to your business processes. If you know React, you can extend the C Sharp, HTML, and JavaScript layouts easily with the tools built in. Let me show you how I installed one of their samples so that we can get started taking a look at how easy it is to use DWKit. I've downloaded the tools and the samples for the vacation request demo from the DWKit website. I started up a Postgres container and you can see it's running up there in Docker on my machine. I started it about a minute or so ago and I installed all the tools, all the database scripts that come as part of the download package inside this DB Postgres package here inside this folder. That's pretty easy to do. The next step for us is to actually open this solution file inside of Visual Studio so that we can take a look at how it runs and start the application. This starter pack comes with two projects inside of the solution. I have the DWKit application. This is a .NET standard library. And I also have the starter application down here. And this starter application is a standard ASP.NET Core application. It's got a startup class and it, it adds configuration just like you would expect. This makes sense. I'm familiar with what this does. So let's start the application and see what it looks like. All right, so it started and I've got this cool little admin panel here. Let me log in with the credentials that they gave us. My login is admin and my password is one. And now I can see all of my vacation requests listed here. I can create a new vacation request with this button and it gives me a cool form here. I can fill in my name. I can select who my manager is. Uh, my manager is John. I can specify how much it's going to cost for this vacation request. Uh, $1,500. And I'll click the Start Signing button to send it over for somebody to sign off on it and approve it. And now my workflow has started. You can see information about that happening down there at the bottom. If I scroll down here, I can see the transition history, how it's processed through the workflow. So the vac vacation request was started and it's been sent over to my manager for signing. Next, the manager can sign it and that's available for the user, John. And they're allowed to approve it, at which point after it's approved, it'll, it'll be sent over to the big boss for signing. Now the big boss for signing can only be done by Sylvia. So I can actually change who I am logged in as. I can make it look like I'm somebody else because I'm the admin. So let me change this so that it looks like what John would see. 
And for this form, here's what John sees, and John can put comments in here and, importantly, can choose one of these two actions, approve or reject. All right, let's approve that. And now you can see John has approved it, and it's now been moved on to the big boss for signing. So let's do the same thing. I'll pull this down and choose Sylvia. And now you see Sylvia is looking at it and now has one of two actions, approve and reject. So if Sylvia approves, and we scroll down, you can see it's now done and it's been sent over for accounting review. And I can scroll down here and you can see Maria, the accountant, can review and take appropriate steps there. So we'll do one more check over and we can either pay out that vacation request or reject it at this point. Let's just pay it out and approve that vacation request. There it is. And it's all completed. We can save that. And now that vacation request for Jeff is available. And when Jeff looks at it, he sees that it's been approved and that it will be paid. And it's in a request approved state. Pretty cool. Okay, so it's been workflowed and sent through a bunch of different folks that can approve and work with it. Let's take a look at the workflow designer so we can see exactly what this process looks like. Here in the workflow designer, I can see that the vacation request created workflow starts here where I created my vacation request. It's sent over to the manager for signing. If it's conditionally approved, then the big boss has a chance to sign it. If the big boss does approve it, it's sent over to the accountant for review. And if the accountant approves it, then it's in its final state here of request approved. But these arrows indicate what happens if different things change during that process. If it's rejected, it's sent back to me by my manager. If the big boss rejects it, it's sent back to my manager. But there's also a timeout approval here that you can see here. So after a certain amount of time, it's automatically sent from the manager to the big boss if maybe my manager isn't available. And this is all easily configured. I can click through here and take a look and see that there's a timer trigger here that'll send it on to the big boss. And I can see all the triggers that are available to me here, including those timers right here. That send to big boss timer is only 10 minutes long. I can also see the other commands that are available here, like start signing, approve, reject, and paid. All right. That's pretty cool. Now this is for this instance of the workflow. I can also look at all of the schemes. There's my vacation request. I can double click into it. And now I can actually edit this if I wanted to. If I wanted to make that timer longer than 10 minutes, I could make it 20 minutes if I wanted so that the manager has 20 minutes to approve. Now this is a demo. Of course, I'd want to make that something a little bit longer, like a couple days, maybe even a week, especially if my manager is out of office on their vacation so that it's automatically sent over to the big boss appropriately after that time expires. This is really neat and I, I appreciate how much thought has gone into building a design surface like this so that I can configure and edit exactly who can interact with the various steps inside my process. There's a collection of actors defined here and there's an actor named Big Boss that has to belong to a role called Big Boss. This highlights one of the other great features that I found about DWKit, this business flow down here. So if I look at business flow, here's the flow for the vacation request scheme. And then when I open that, I can scroll down here and I can see the state called Big Boss Signing. Somebody who has the Big Boss role is allowed to edit the document. But during that Big Boss Signing state, while my request is in that state, any other role that folks are in, they're allowed to view the document, but they're not allowed to edit. Pretty cool. That lets me define exactly who can act on each step of the process. Now, one more thing that I want to look at here is 
if I wanted to customize this a little bit or if I wanted to integrate with another application, there's a dashboard here that I can click to and it'll show me about the license and exactly how many instances are configured and just for developing at this point, this is okay. I only need one instance and I'm tinkering and learning a little bit more about it. But I can also provide open API integration here and I can specify an API key so that I can write a custom application to integrate with the DWKit application platform so that my application can take advantage of the workflow and process management and business flow features that are configured and managed over here by this system. This is really cool. I really like how easy it is to see how you can integrate with and use all the great features here inside of DWKit. I don't have to be a developer to make these very simple interactions with the application. However, I do have a couple pieces of feedback that I'd like to see the platform use in the future. This code that's downloaded and installed for me, it would be great if this was a template that was available from a .NET SDK. So I could just say .NET new DWKit starter application and it would start up everything that I needed. That'd be great. And I put everything inside of a Docker container. It'd be really nice if I could get that default Docker container or maybe even a script to configure a Docker container as part of that template so that my default database that I need is already loaded up with my schema and all the initial data that I could use. This way it becomes push button and I can just start my application quickly and easily with a simple Postgres database and then figure out how to scale up from there when I do need to be able to manage tremendous volume and I want to use things like SQL Server or an Oracle database for folks to be able to use and get that enterprise grade interactions with my DWKit install. I hope you join me for my future videos where I'm going to start customizing DWKit and learn how to integrate this with the use case that I have where I need to schedule availability and I want to merge that with scheduling classes and see how I can make that business process a little bit easier and better for all the parties involved. Thanks so much for watching.